Hello again, everyone, and welcome to uh, the uh, Premiere Pro video tutorial. This is part 2.1, um, editing extended. So this is um, sort of further editing tips and tricks. Um, so this video will take you into some more advanced editing features. Um, and yeah, so in the rest of the Premiere Pro series, uh, we've got titles, effects, sound and finishing so for now let's just get going with um, Premiere Pro video tutorial part 2.1 editing extended okay right so in this session uh, we'll be using match frame track select forwards and back ripple and roll the trim edit tool and I'll be showing you some hidden menus and then finally window layouts um, so okay let's get going so match frame um, match frame is very simple to use um, as you can see uh, you access it via the sequence menu um, and scroll down to match frame or just click the F key. And I'll show you exactly what it does now. So if I am editing, watching my uh, my edits, my sequence, and I'm working on a clip, and I need to, for whatever reason, I need to access this clip again from my project browser um, and I can see it in my timeline but because I might have added it to the timeline a long time ago I don't necessarily know where it is in my project browser now so um, if I want to go back to the source clip basically um, the simplest and easiest way is by using match frame so wherever I place my playhead along the clip any clip and then I press F it will bring up that exact frame so the exact frame that I'm looking at in my uh, program window is going to be brought up in the source window but not only the exact frame, so um, in my sort of mini timeline in the source window I've got my playhead here and that playhead is sitting on the exact same frame as the playhead over here. Um, the in and out points are still showing, so the the in and out points for that, for that clip are still showing, but also I've got the rest of the entire clip available to me as well now. Um, so if there was something that I wanted to check um, from the rest of the clip, you know, if I was kind of thinking, well, I, I kind of like that bit, but is it the best bit to be using? Um, I, I better have a look at the rest of it. I can I can do that, um, ring it up by using Match Frame. Um, you can also do uh, a clever little trick for for example, if let me just unlink this selection so I can select the audio separately and I'm going to delete the audio from this clip. So if um, for example I accidentally delete the audio from from this clip or any clip, right what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll to the very front of that clip and if you remember if I scrub through and press shift it will snap into position so now I'm on the first frame of that clip and I'm going to press F and that has match framed my clip and it's brought it up here in the source window so now I've got my original source clip but I've still got the in and out points here um, so and because this is the source clip it's it's got the source audio with it as well um, so now all I can do all I need to do is click overwrite 
and this, this sort of new source clip will overwrite the old one but it will overwrite it with the audio in place as well so let's see what happens if I click overwrite bum there you go so that's um, added my clip but added it with the audio back in there as well so that's a good trick in case you lose your audio uh, but match frame is very very useful um, useful thing to to know uh, you, you once you get using it you'll find you kind of use it m more often than you than you think you than you thought you would okay so that's match frame so track select forward and back let's go in to have a look at what track select forward and back does so let's have a look say I want to uh, what do I want to do? I don't know what I want to do, but I, what I want to do is I want to move um, my edit or or half of my edit, for example this. Perhaps I've got uh, a whole load of clips from another sequence that I want to paste in position here, but what I need to do first is move these clips out of the way to create a space so I can add them in. Um, so you can see what I did then, which was sort of lasso them, all of those clips, and then I can just grab them and move them all at the same time. That's quite easy as we are right now, but if you imagine you're working on a really big project, um, it's got you know hundreds of video clips, thousands of audio clips, um, and you're not going to be able to lasso all of them and be a hundred percent certain that you caught them all because remember if you miss any and you move stuff then everything can go out of sync and you can create a horrible mess especially if you've got a really big project and things start going out of sync you're going to get into in a real trouble um, so in order to be able to select a whole load of clips say I want to select everything in an edit from one point on then I can use track select forward and that's this little thing here in the top in the toolbar so I, I can just select that one and if I come down to my timeline wherever I click in this sequence will select everything from that point onwards Okay, and then you can just move them as well easily when you do that. So track select forwards, track select backwards. Um, surprise, surprise, does the exact opposite. So that will select everything in the other direction. Okay, very very useful. Um, if you're, you're working on big projects and you need to select a large amount of clips. So I'm going to go back now to my pointer tool which is keyboard shortcut V. So next we'll look at ripple and roll. Um, so let's go and have a look at what those tools do in Premiere. Um, okay so um, I'm going to click link selection and make sure that my clips are all linked and I'm going to go over here to where the ripple and roll tools are you, you may have noticed before when I clicked on the track select button um, when you you can you can select these uh, icons and you can also click and hold them and you'll get an extended menu down there so the ripple edit tool um, so let me just zoom in a little bit here to show you what happens so if I drag a clip using the ripple tool what it will do is it will shorten that clip that I'm dragging but it won't create a gap like it normally would so if if let's just go back to my pointer tool if I I can I can do this shortening clips with the pointer tool but if I do that it creates a gap in the edit um, and I might be wanting to shorten my clip but obviously I don't really want to have a big 
black space in the middle of my edit so what I'll do is I'll select my ripple edit tool and I'll close that down but also the rest of my edit will um, will close that gap um, what it does do is, is it will obviously change the the overall length of your edit or make it shorter um, so you need to look out for that uh, but I can also extend that back out and the same thing happens it'll just push my edit out of the way I can also do the same from the front of the clip so I can shorten the front of the clip and what will happen then is when I close when I let go of this it just takes everything and pulls it all back into position um, so it just it's just shortening the front of my clip so this kind of um, it, it requires you got a bit of knowledge as to what's going on in the edit here um, so ripple roll and the trim tool later on they they sort of um, require that you understand that um, in 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 any edit point you have what's called um, an outgoing clip and an incoming clip so the clip that's going out and the clip that's coming back in um, and in between those you have an edit point obviously um, but what what you can't see is all of those frames that are still there on each one of these clips so um, obviously that that's not the full length of this clip there are it's much longer than that but we've just we've just hidden those frames um, out of view for now. We've not kind of deleted them for good. We've just moved them out of the way for now, and we can get them back at any time. So that's the the main thing here is we can we can get these frames back at any time. So if I click on the ripple tool, like I said, extend this clip out, um, and I'll just add those frames that are just all there sitting waiting um, obviously if I extend so far I might come to the the very end of my source clip and that's as far as it can go obviously um, but you know you, you can extend and shorten clips using the ripple tool what ripple generally means in in and you may come across ripple in in other areas um, of editing and we will in fact later on when we do effects and things like that what it generally means is that it will move your clips in the timeline um, anything that does a ripple edit will will move clips in the timeline any other non ripple edit will leave the clips where they are and, and create a gap or something like that so that's what ripple does roll Roll's really useful actually, I use Roll quite a lot. So if we click on the Ripple uh, tool and then scroll down to Rolling Edit. So all this does simply is, um, you'll see that this has got uh, a, an icon with double arrows pointing in both directions. Um, and that's because when you grab a, an edit point with the Roll tool, what you are doing is just moving that edit point along so I'm making either the incoming or the outgoing clip longer or shorter depending on which direction I'm moving um, but when I make one longer the other one gets shorter so I'm basically kind of uh, I'm sort of uh, adding frames to one and, and removing them from the other it's kind of that kind of action um, and you can see in the program monitor that it's showing me exactly which frame visually that I'm going to end up on when when I stop my edit when I stop moving okay and so that's um, showing me both of those frames right there okay um, some of these things are quite difficult to get your head around until you actually do them and they come become quite obvious um, so it's very it's quite difficult for me to explain what's happening and you can't always see because you're looking at an edit that doesn't really make much sense to you um, but once you start working on your own clips and you have a go with these tools you'll start realizing how simple they are to use um, 
So my advice really is just get going with the with the editing, practice with these tools first, um, because what you what you might find is you you you're using um, or you're editing in a certain way for a long time before you realise actually the rolling edit tool would do what I'm doing now but in a much quicker way um, so yeah uh, it's it's best to get get to know what they do so that you can just start using them um, immediately um, and straight away okay right <clears throat> so that's ripple and roll so the trim edit tool uh, the trim edit tool is basically like um, like a grown up version of of ripple and roll. Uh, it's sort of a whole kind of framework that encompasses both ripple and roll um, in, in the same kind of uh, edit. Basically, um, there are keyframes. Uh, sorry, not um, there. There are keyboard shortcuts. Sorry, there are keyboard shortcuts. Um, just there and um, I'll put these uh, there are keyboard shortcuts here um, and I'll, I'll put these PowerPoint presentations up as well so you can um, you know you can access the information in them as well um, but for now let's go back to Premiere um, and so to open up the trim edit window all you have to do is I'm going back to my uh, pointer tool by clicking V if I just double click on any edit point like so my trim edit window will open in the program window and you can see what it's showing me is the outgoing clip and the incoming clip um, at the moment, the way that I selected that, the, just the way that I double clicked it, um, just happens to have the left hand side or the outgoing clip selected. Um, I can easily just click on these and you can see with the blue lines above and below which one is being selected when I click on it. Or if I shift click on one, Sorry, no, not not shift click. That's uh, some other program. <laughs> if I click in the center, in the center line, in the edit point, then um, I will select both of these points. Okay. So now, let's let's have a look at what happens if I just got one selected for now. So if I've got the left hand side selected, I can click minus one, and I'll lose one frame from my outgoing clip or minus five and I'm losing five frames okay if I want to put them back plus five and there's a handy little counter over here on the left hand side that's telling me exactly how many frames I've moved um, at any given time okay okay and same on the other side I can plus five frames there or minus so like I said there does come a point at which you can you can run out of frames when you hit the end of your clip for example um, so I can add and minus frames from either side or if I select both it will take so if I'm clicking the left hand side it's going to take one off the left hand side and add it to the right hand side and if I do the right hand side it's going to do the opposite adding to the right and taking from the left okay so same thing here um, 
you know it's it's all about getting getting in there having a go and you know just sort of realizing how simple this this whole system is really it, it might look a little bit unwieldy at first um and I've got to admit, you know, the ripple and roll tools do the same as the trim edit window. The trim edit window does it in a much more precise and measured way. Um, but you can also be precise with ripple and roll as well. So, um, you know, they, they generally are a bit more kind of on the fly type um, type edits. But um, you know you can be precise with 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 both ways if if you know exactly how to do that you can um so yeah uh that's uh trimming basically this the the whole process that we're talking about now with the trim edit window and the ripple and roll tools is called trimming um and it's about kind of fine editing um getting down to the exact frame that you want okay uh, so this is this point when you start building your actual edit rather than your first assembly. Okay, so that's the trim edit tool. Uh, hidden menus. Um, this is uh, just quite straightforward. In fact, I don't really need to go back to Premiere for this. So hidden menus. Um, these three lines here and this little spanner here, you'll come across these uh, in all sorts of different places all around Premiere and they are hidden menus. Um, in fact, I will show you some. Uh, so yeah, there's one, there's a spanner there, there's a menu, click on that. There's the three little lines there, there's another menu. Um, where else is there's three lines there um, there's a spanner here so you know everywhere you kind of look and see these things there will be a a little menu there um, for you to have a look at uh, so yeah lots of functions um, are kind of hidden all over the place. Um, so if you're if you're kind of stuck looking for a specific function um, to work on a very specific part of the um, the edit window, then have a look for these hidden menus because that might be exactly where it is. Okay. I can't go through it everything that's in each of the hidden menus because as you've seen there's there's just lots of them we will go through some specific things later on um but for now it's just good to know where they are and that you know you may need them at some point okay so the next thing is window layouts um I, i've touched on this a little bit uh with the tabs at the top here so each one of these tabs is a different window layout and a window layout just means you know the way in which uh, let's click the uh, yeah so I forgot to say if you if you if you want to close the um, trim edit window you just click into the timeline somewhere and it will close it down window layouts are just just that basically um, different ways that your windows are set out within your particular tab um, you can make up your own window layouts you know uh, you can uh, select these little windows and move them around drag them here and there you can actually move all sorts of things in in different places um, and you can actually make a horrible mess <laughs> without uh, by accident you know completely by accident you can make a total mess of your window and now what have I done this is my main editing tab if I click away and come back to it it's still gonna be the same I made a real mess of this um, so all I need to do to fix that is go into window 
workspaces sorry and reset to saved layout um, if I decide that I actually like this um, what I've done here and I've done it on purpose I've moved things to where I want them I can go to window workspaces and save as new workspace and I can save that as total mess okay and now when I go into my workspaces I've got a total mess down at the bottom but also now because I've saved that as total mess if I go back to my editing tab oh that's still a total mess so how am I going to fix this again yeah so it's window workspaces reset to saved layout okay because I saved it as a different name, then it's going to reset to its proper saved layout. Okay, so how are we getting on? We finished. So that's um, Premiere Video Tutorial Part 2.1 Editing Extended um, finished. Uh, so look out for the next few tutorials. And I'll see you in the next video soon. Okay, cheers. Bye.